Okay. You're, you're on. Okay, so the plan for the, the dog was research-based. The teacher brought in, th in the information. The plans that Kim said about the students in the classroom, they didn't start by making stuff. They started by going and visiting these two locations, the nursing home and the hospital, and asking, what are the needs here? What are you deficient on? What can we do? And then they did the research. They, they pulled together their data, and that's how they came about creating these items. So it's, it's a very complete, comprehensive project-based. Mm. And, and you mentioned before, one of our questions, and you've answered you know, some examples of innovation. Um, you've answered a little bit of the sustainability. Earlier on, you mentioned uh, the reflective piece, but how are they sure that this stuff is, is truly innovative, that it, it sort of sticks? And what are some of those maybe conditions that uh, dictate you know, the innovation is, is effective, it's going to be around for a while? Like, What are some of the things that you saw there that, that can sort of ensure that? Hmm. As far as from the educator's perspective or the results base? Well, I mean, how do they, they if they, if you take, for example, um, the, 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 the dog that was allowed in the buildings and um, the, what they did for that process, how do they make sure that that's um, a truly uh, innovative thing that's going to sort of stick? Like what, what, what do they do to make sure? And like I said before, you mentioned a reflective piece a little bit, but what do they do to sort of make, make sure that these really unique and innovative ideas have staying power and sustain they- Sustain them, yeah. And they're right. sustainable. Yeah, sustain them. So there's a check and balance part of it. The teacher with the dog had to report out to her supervisors and then also had to continue with the research. A lot of hers in this particular scenario was anecdotal the, the students said that they felt calmer when the dog was there um, so in that scenario that was uh, that was her following up giving her observations of it and continuing the process and meeting ongoing with supervisors in regards to leadership and the innovation of leadership I think that um, the creation of leaders that can plan forward and they're thinking about how to continuously adapt and change and set up where things aren't going to be met with so much controversy, whether it's on a public level, whether it's on a state level, whether it's on a community level, is also exceptionally powerful to their sustainability of different endeavors. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, the, the reflection piece is just embedded in their culture, and so is the relational trust between you know the parents and the community and the schools and things like that. So I think there's a constant reflection, and you know, uh, you know, they do something, they reflect. They do something, they reflect in the teaching profession as well as across the board. Excellent, uh, Mike, Rich, you follow, uh, let, any final questions that you have? I'm going to defer to Mike. I've been talking too much. <laughs> Mike, any last bit of questions? My, my, my last question has to do from 30,000 feet. So, you know, with the Finnish ministry and, and as far as policy making and, and all that, did you glean any insight as far as what teachers or administrators thought about their, let's say for lack of a better word, their board of regents or their U.S. Department of Education and, and the way they roll things out? Well, in comparison to ours, which they were somewhat up on, they are happy with what they have. Um, I do think that the majority of teachers would always say they would like more money for, for certain things, but that wasn't a, a prevailing theme. They do like the ability to make it their own. So even though the, the Finland has rolled out changes in their in their curriculum, throughout their, their pre-work, the two to three years that before the actual rollout, every... Um, Every community and every building had the opportunity to make it their own and make it work within their structure. And the teachers spoke about that, that they were very happy with that aspect of it. Yeah, there's a, there's a true sense of collaboration across the board in, in any kind of changes that, changes that occurred in any of the institutions there. I mean, so, so you didn't view or hear or perceive anything in regard to, oh, here comes another thing coming down the road. You know, there's no support, you know. You didn't hear any of that type of conversation like we do here in New York? Absolutely not. And we, we went there during a very difficult, you know, the, the Common Core was a mess and there were situations going on. And we just had nothing but positive comments, you know, because it really is truly a, a collaborative effort education. Like I right. said, 
they make changes to the curriculum, they interview the parents, they interview the kids, and it goes back to what's gonna help us as a society and help us move forward. Yeah, just like we do here. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and when we were there, it was just the beginning of the Syrian refugee situation, and they were preparing to take in students from Syria, and that was the, the some of the preparation that we got to talk to um, one of the principles about was, so what is this gonna look like? And her main thing was, we're going to problem solve and we're going to figure it out. They strongly believe that they need to home, they need to school the students in their first language as well. And right now they're dealing with approximately 44 different languages. Um, so, but the whole thing of, well, this is, we're, we're going to problem solve. We're going to vet this out. We're going to come to um, some understanding of what the needs are for everyone. And so when, when it's being said in here, in our context of this is being thrown at us, there's no support. The support problem is already embedded in the planning process. I, I, I don't believe they have board of education over there either. No, they don't. No. no. <laughs> but we we talked about that, right? Yeah. All right. You know, in terms of administrative, real fast, in terms yeah. of administrative leadership preparation, you know, if you look at how New York State develops its lead and certifies its leaders, and there's there's a standard for problem solving and you know planning ahead and thorough collaboration premises. But you, I really have to wonder whether that's really, whether folks really have had had an opportunity to learn that to bring it back into the real world when they finally do get those leadership jobs. It's troublesome, very troublesome. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, for, in regards to the Finland training, you can't start at the, at the, te at when the person becomes a leader, you have to actually start as when they walk into the education field as their undergraduate work, because they're revered there. Teaching is up on that level as uh, medical and uh, lawyers are. So the best of the best are going into the profession and then the best of the best are being trained in deep research as well as special ed, regardless of what they're teaching. So when you start from that pool and then transcend over into studying to become leaders, it's, it's a different starting point than where many of us have started here. Yeah. Well said. Um, additionally, and I don't know if, if we've brought this up, leaders can come and go. So what I mean by that is if let's say you decide to become a principal for five years and you want to go back into the teaching, you can without any penalty. And that, I think, brings some different perspective and life into it that we may or may not have here. It'd be interesting to, to parallel that between, that it could be a good research topic. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean, from, from what we, I mean, we, could, we can go all day looking at some of the things that you guys brought up and talked about. Um, and uh, you could look at it from glass half full or half empty. Um, you know, uh, Finland's roughly the size of New York State, so then why can't New York State or other states right. do it too, right? Um, mm -hmm. But you also spoke about a, a very, very much systematic, um, almost virus here in the States that it has to be changed from uh, undergraduate uh, all the way on through uh, to change within education and in schools. Uh, so it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an issue that we're trying to resolve, Mike and Rich and, and Anthony as well by getting the word out out there and you guys did an, an amazing job of outlining it showcasing some of the stuff that is going on uh, abroad and mike you'll you'll get some more of that information next week as you travel over there uh, but thank you so much guys very much appreciate your time and what you contributed to the conversation and we would love 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 to have you back on either this show or uh, the one that mike and i do children first education to talk about more of the conditions um, positive conditions that uh, the children have. Uh, um, you know, we didn't get into Singapore uh, at all, uh, Jackie, but we could talk about those other areas as well uh, in, in, uh, in conversations that follow. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you for the opportunity. No, no problem. Thank you, guys.